Mardi Gras 2023 has begun at Universal Orlando. And we're going to take you through what to expect this year. Plus little things and bow pick a bow bow. This is episode 545 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hey everybody, what's up? It is Chris, your host for today. No, 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 not Barry White, <laughs> as much as the voice sounds like it. I've just been coughing up along for the past week, so yay. But uh, yeah, I'm not alone. I uh, am joined with the fantastic co-host that I have for however many years now. Uh, joining me, I have Lee. I can't believe you don't actually know how many years you've been on this show. <laughs> More than one year. How about that? <laughs> I think it's four. I don't COVID, ruined all, COVID ruined everything. So. <laughs> I'm not even sure myself, to be fair, at this point. Hello, everyone. I think uh, it's four. We also have... Thank you for throwing off my concentration there. <laughs> we also have Tracy. Hello, everyone. And last but not least, we got Michelle. Hello. I've been on the show for a year. Well, just over. Really? It's yeah. like it's a lot yeah. It's like January, yeah. No, December. December 2021. Officially. But wasn't it officially January, like the beginning of the year? No, I think it was the end. The end of 2021. I thought we sent her the cake in January. What cake? I don't even know how many years Chris has been on. Has, is it like four? Four. Five? I think 20 January 2017. I thought it was 18? 2018. Well, no, because the the was it the show that I was on as part of the producers club was in 2017, the Volcano Bay one. Yeah, that was the like one of the last episodes of, of December, and I think officially it was January. Sweet. Yeah. Good job, Chris. Hanging hey. in there for that. We've long. been here forever. 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 Yeah. <laughs> hey, I wasn't on last week. In fact, me, Tracy, and Michelle weren't on last week. To be fair, so honestly, when we're dead. This living rooms could be haunted by two podcasters. <laughs> they will be. Yeah. Well, that got morbid real fast. No, no, I like my haunted house. It's lots of stories. Not with us, though. Just randomly recording this crap every week. Oh, I'm not spending eternity with you either. <laughs> Chris, wow. please move. All right. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's move this train forward. Uh, let's uh, jump into <laughs> Little Things with Seth. This is Seth Kaberski, co-author of The Unofficial Guides, and I'm ready to let the good times roll with this Mardi Gras kickoff edition of All the Little Things for February of 2023. Like I said, I'm recording this on the debut day of Universal Orlando's Mardi Gras celebration, and we are coming off of a busy couple weeks with the recent unofficial Harry Potter convention, and the Rock the Universe Christian Concert Weekend. So if you're headed out to the parks, especially on the weekends when the concerts are going on, be prepared to face some heavy crowds. Those crowds are good news for you if you are a Comcast stockholder. Comcast recently reported its fourth quarter earnings, and the good news is that revenue increased 12% up to $2.1 billion for the quarter, due mainly to higher attendance and guest spending at their parks in the United States and Japan, with those parks delivering their highest ever adjusted earnings during that quarter. You can maybe get a little bit of that money back from Comcast with a new special they've got going on. Guests right now can buy a three-day ticket and get an additional two days for free. And Volcano Bay can be added on to that deal for only $35. If you bring a service animal to the Universal Orlando Resort, you'll be interested to know that there's some updates to the relief stations. Previously, guests had to go into backstage areas to give their service animals a place to pee, but now there are new stations in Seuss Landing and Marvel Superhero Island, as well as by the IOA Lighthouse and near the Firehouse Building in Universal Studios, Florida. You can find these locations for your service animal in the Universal Orlando mobile app on the map under service animal rest areas. And no Alexa Christie's Okay, account. as we head on into Universal <laughs> Studios Florida, the first thing you'll notice on Hollywood is that the Tribute Store is now open. It's very well decorated, but it's also quite cramped compared to the old location. If you're there on a peak night for a Mardi Gras concert, be prepared for a bit of a wait to make your way inside. 
right around the and corner. The Work continues on the new yes. Minion attractions. The Minion Cafe has gone vertical with steel framing, and its construction walls have expanded out, closing off the pathway between the restaurant and the former Shrek building. Just down the block in New York, Revenge of the Mummy has finally emerged from its technical rehearsals and is officially open. As we make our way around the lagoon, you may be aware of recent issues they've had with the drainage infrastructure, which has been causing some refurbishments. Richter's was closed for a while and has now reopened. The same with Shea Alcatraz. But now there are more walls up around the exit of Men in Black. Walls are also up in front of the Simpsons ride, and the statue of the family all sitting together in a car has been temporarily removed. However, access to the attraction itself is still available. Nearby, Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone is now Woody Woodpecker's Demolition Zone. Construction equipment can be heard behind the walls, and most of the Fievel playground has already been torn down. However, Universal recently filed some patents hinting that an interactive meet-and-greet themed to Ping's Noodle Bar from Kung Fu Panda could be coming to the new kid zone. And speaking of rumors, recently some late-night testing of drones above the Universal Studios Florida Lagoon was spotted. No confirmation if this was testing for a possible future public performance or simply for a private event. And as we head out of Universal Studios Florida, I noticed they were having some trouble with the newly installed exit turnstiles, and they were having some work done on them. However, it seems that all the work has finally wrapped up on the turnstiles over at Islands of Adventure, at least for right now. Making our way around the IOA Lagoon, I spotted some missing treetops around the entrance of Seuss Landing. Hopefully those were just taken down for a refurb and were back by the time you hear this. Speaking of refurbs, Poseidon's Fury in Lost Continent will be closed February 6th through the 11th for a brief cleanup. But Hagrid's will be closed from the 21st all the way through March 5th. That's to repair the hurricane damage and replace that temporary bridge that I've told you about. Jurassic Park River Adventure wraps up its annual refurbishment on February 12th, and the Thunder Falls restaurant recently reopened, or at least it mostly did. Some sections of the dining room remain closed last I looked. And in Toon Lagoon, Popeye and Bluto's Build Rat Barges will be going down for an annual refurbishment on February 13th all the way through March 10th. And Me Ship the Olive is already closed and will also remain closed through March 10th. And before we leave the resort, here's a few upcoming events you might be interested in at City Walk. NBC Sports Grill and Brew is hosting a Super Bowl party on February 12th from 5.30 p.m. till midnight. And mark your calendar for Friday, March 17th and Saturday, March 18th when Pat O'Brien's hosts their annual St. Patrick's Day celebration from 2 p.m. till 1 a.m. Okay, that'll wrap it up for this time. I'm Seth Kaberski. You can find my books, The Unofficial Guide to Universal Orlando 2023 at theunofficialguides.com. And I'll be back in a couple weeks with more of those little things from around the Universal Orlando Resort. I will say, Chris chimed in about his face on the bottle. So mm -hmm. not only is there a picture on our social media, the Madeline got for us, but Tracy and I were watching the most recent episode of Vincent Vision yes. on YouTube today, and you were even on there. Was it? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so oh, cool. yeah. That is cool. <laughs> yeah. Best money I ever spent. It is pretty cool. I must That's admit. the perfect thing for you, too. Oh, yeah. That's that, Let me tell you. Exactly. that When they said, oh, you put it on a bottle, and then they'll give you the bottle, I'm like, welp. You got me sold, especially with a lot cheaper <laughs> than everything else. Yeah. 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 What did I say about the tribute yeah. store? Smaller, isn't it? I said it was I said that was smaller. We're gonna talk a lot more about it later I when know. we get into Mardi Gras, but yeah, it definitely is smaller. Yeah. Not gonna yeah. say told you so, but you know, told you so. I can't remember whether we <laughs> talked about it two weeks ago whether I mentioned it about so we still don't know where the uh preview centers going actually we've got seth coming on next mm -hmm. week to kind of talk about so i'll ask him see if he knows yeah um 
But yeah, I think it actually works better where it is. We said we were going to talk about it, weren't we? Anyway. Yeah, we'll do it later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of this we're going to talk about next week, but walls up everywhere right now. <sighs> yeah. Which is good yeah. and bad. It's bad for now, but that's good news because we've been asking for refurbishments yeah. and things to things to grow for a long time. So yeah. I think they that's need they need to though, don't they? Like <laughs> I've said this with Epic Universe <laughs> opened. If they get people who haven't been to Universal Orlando before and end up going because of Epic Universe, so go to Epic Universe and then go. I want to go and try out the others, and then walk into those two and be like, oh, these are a bit scabby and dated and. But it just seems to be a bit much, especially with Mardi Gras going on, to have walls up everywhere. It, I mean, when else know. do you do stuff? That's the problem. Tracy and I... Tracy yeah, you, asked, can, yeah, you, can, you don't have to do it all at once. No, well... You can do it bits. True. It was funny. It's probably like, rip the Band-Aid off style. Yeah. We were talking about when we were watching Vincent earlier, and Tracy's like, when was the last time we <laughs> went to Universal that wasn't during an event? And I was like, right, it wasn't... Uh, 2013... <laughs> Was the last time we came to Universal, not during an event. Wow. So we've done Horror Nights, Mardi Gras, Horror Nights, Holidays. I mean, there's almost, there's very small windows of not having an event. Yeah, Yeah, that's what they said, yeah. Yeah. They throw in Rock the Universe and Grad Bash and all that. There isn't a lot of time. No. No. I mean, the kids' own walls up there, I mean, it's not the biggest deal, right? Because it's it's really only affecting E.T., Mm. Um, but yeah, some of the other ones are kind of kind of annoying. But you got to get it done, right? At least they are moving fast. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys saw the demolition going on in, in Kid Zone. It's crazy how fast that's going. Yeah, yeah, someone posted a picture from the balcony at oh, Animal yes. Actors, yeah. and there's a, a fair lot of it gone. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, with the the reefer going on Kid Zone and then um, up near Men in Black. There's actually your last restroom is the is Android's dungeon, yeah, in Simpsons, and then the next one's the old Amity bathroom. That's not oh, Men in Black yeah. still up. The bathroom, no, it's not. It's not. No, because who was it? We were watching and he went to have a look, oh, and it was close. He said, "I'm going to have to go to Amity." I might showed. have been. Was it Tim Tracker? Uh, yeah, it was Tim. I think yeah. I was dozing at that point. It was Tim. Okay, um, I missed yeah, that. Yeah, so that's actually right. just for people to be aware that if you start to think you might need to go as you just go into Simpsons. Go because your next opportunity is the other side of the park. Yeah, that's a good point. If so, I end up coming over for Horror run. Nights, they better mm. be open. They're my Horror Nights bathrooms. <laughs> mm. So wait, they have walls up, but you can still ride the ride, right? Simpsons. It's that corner like um, near the, the Coke. So shameless style. plug, if you go on our Instagram, I think I posted a, a video that Madeline got me. So basically it's walled off right the way around. So you have to go right round to like the left hand side. And the entrance is there. So between, like the way Tracy said, between the court kiosk. I didn't kiosk, get to say anything, actually, but that's okay. Between the court kiosk and, and where the normal entrance is. Uh, as usual. Yeah, so the, yeah the, that one's kind of kind of more of an annoying uh, mm. wall up there because it really is an eyesore. I just wonder what they're doing. It really, it, it's quite a bottleneck as well because they haven't moved the kiosks. Well, they've took down the, like Seth said, they've took down the, that, there's like the family on the, coaster car on top of the big pedestal thing at the entrance that's been taken down that's gone entrance to what simpsons i mean we're talking about simpsons i'm up near men and black toilets that's what i was talking about i'm talking about all of it like what is going if the rides are closed what are they refurbing no, i mean the the, if the rides open. are open yeah, right, what yeah. are they refurbing just the so that sign's gone entrance. right and that's a pretty big sign there they're probably doing some refurbishment on that but I don't see that being the reason why those walls are up just because they could have removed that without putting up walls. Well, exactly. Seth's in little things that was something to do with drainage. In that corner? That's what he said. He you said, mean the that's corner why. that I said that they have trouble yeah. with flooded and you said, no, they don't? I don't know what you're about. <laughs> 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 I'll just talk to Seth. It's okay. You won't be here. Um, huh. yeah, yeah, that's what he we, said uh, of why Richter's was closed mm-hmm. and why Shea Alcatraz was closed and then why the walls are up at Men in Black. Mm-hmm. You can find out next week. Who knows? Yeah. Can we uh, petition Universal to serve actual noodles? Uh, yes. Yeah. This, I need noodles. I, they, I'm not like up to date with my my DreamWorks characters, so I heard that. Yeah. Kind of missed the meet and greet and Same. started looking up like, oh, there's a noodle shop that's going to open All up. Right. That's Same. awesome. No. That was me too. And I was like, yes, we need that's a noodle so bar. so excited. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure that meet and greet they have in Beijing in Kung Fu Land. Yes. 
Kung Fu Landa. Yeah. Kung Fu Panda Land of Awesomeness, which is Kung Fu Panda Landa. If we get anything <laughs> even, like that name better. If yeah. we get anything even remotely like that land Kung Fu Panda oh. Land over there, it looks awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna pick mm-hmm. Seth Brin and see what he knows. Mm-hmm. Um, drawn shows always good fun oh I'm, yeah i'm always yeah, mesmerized by them so where drones have gone to with their technologies and how they can synchronize yeah. and do all those light shows i am yeah. all for it yeah and for somewhere like universal that can't really do fireworks it's it'd be ideal i'd like yeah. to see it in Ireland again i want to pick seth brains about it next week but i i kind of hope it goes into islands if they are doing it for the parks because he did say it could have just been like a private event thing to be honest there's nothing stopping them doing both parks that's what I'm saying. I'd no, like I'm to saying, see you know, them do could, one in well, the season, could, cinematic celebration in studios and then have one in... Yeah, but the, what I'm saying is they could do two at the same time. They're close enough. Oh, yeah. You know. They could, but then they would have to... I mean, I hope they do, right? But the problem is, is that you'd have to have these shows occurring at nighttime, especially the drone show, because that yeah. one's like heavily dependent on nighttime. And yes. we don't yeah. get that very often. So, But then so cinematic celebration, to be fair... Yeah, but that one's that one's a bit different, right? Because I mean, you're a lot closer than the drones mm-hmm. are, and you have a lot more lighting hitting on those walls yeah. that are right in front of you, or the you know the water walls. So I feel like with the drones, in order for it to even really like wow you, it's got to be nighttime. So maybe it's for horror nights. Would be cool. I'll take it for every night. Yeah, true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. Hmm. I need to make it to that Pat O'Brien party. I don't think your liver could handle a Pat O'Brien's party, Michelle, to be fair. What, what, what <laughs> that doesn't mean I have to drink a lot, but I'd experience no, Pat O'Brien for the first time. It absolutely means you have to drink a lot. St. Paddy's Day No, party. I don't. Right. We just loved the dueling pianos. We submitted so many song requests mm. that during our dinner, it was unreal. But that was a great time. That A party there sounds awesome. Mm. Oh, yeah. And the hurricanes there are pretty good. Yeah, we got out the, in the yeah. back patio, didn't we? It's gorgeous it lovely, out there. yeah. Did you take the glass home? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's in the cupboard out there. Yes. The yeah. We took ours, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Michelle, would you like to tell us about some Mardi Gras news? <laughs> We've got a lot I to get to. Love nothing more. <laughs> um, last Saturday saw the beginning of this year's Mardi Gras, International Flavors of Carnival at Universal Orlando, and we're going to take you through what to expect. Now, the event will run every day through April 16th, and while we await the rest of the concert lineup to be announced, it will be announced. <laughs> That's uh, why I put that in to, there. <laughs> uh, you will be able to experience eight live performances by Sean Paul, Marin Morris, well, the Goo Goo Dolls, and more at the Music Stage Plaza on select Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. Yeah. Now, don't forget to get your spot set, get your arms limbered up to catch the beads as you watch this year's Mythical Realms of Mardi Gras Parade which is featuring six new floats inspired by, by fantastical creatures like dragons, phoenixes. Is it phoenixes? Fe- we had this phoenix, phoenix, that's phoenix what eye. Last time. Yeah, phoenix eyes. Uh, unicorns and more that will join the iconic two-story riverboat and nearly 50-foot-long king gator. And the parade will take Ooh. place at either 6.15, 7.30 or 7.45, dependent upon the night, and will take place every night of the event except for March 31st. Don't know why that is. It's killing me at the moment because, look... There's the potential, the slightest potential that Tracy and I might make it out for Mardi Gras <laughs> this year. Things mm-hmm. are going on, right? It's Whether slight. it happens or not, I don't know. But things are going on. So Look, I'm kind things of... are happening without your permission. <laughs> <laughs> I need a passport in my possession yes, first. Yes, I am so torn at the moment because Madeline was sending me, so Madeline, our awesome new video photograph social media getter in the parks at the moment was sending me videos from the parade last night and I'm like I'm posting them but I'm not watching them because <laughs> I might get to see it in person I don't know so it's killing me at the moment you're like not wanting to care about the event enough just to have something left for you in case you do go yeah yeah and of course if you want to fling beads at people oh yes then don't forget to book your spot on this year's Mardi Gras float ride and dine experience now this price has changed slightly so I'm assuming Ooh. a lot of people have already booked this and that's why the price has gone up so um, it includes a three-course meal at either Finnegan's, Lombard's, Cowfish, or MBC, and one Mardi Gras parade, parade float rider reservation, and that is available now starting at eighty four ninety nine plus tax. Now, when we mentioned this on the show when it first came out, it was sixty four ninety nine yeah. plus tax. Wow, that's a big Ouch, increase. That's, yeah, it's a heck of a jump. 
Um, as a day guest, you'll also be able to get a spot but the, on the virtual line thing on the app. So it'll be, if you want to get that, you need to be in City Walk at like seven o'clock in the morning with that app open. And you still might not get in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet you they increase the prices too because they, you know, put out all the pass holder reservations and everything. So they know that those are all gone now. Yeah. As a pass holder, you don't get that exclusive thing. That, so okay. or it's, it's sold out. So now there's more people that are willing to pay. So let's jack it up a little bit. Mm. Yeah. You know, what's crazy, something I noticed as well when quoting this, um, a package for somebody, was that they don't have a different price for children. Interesting. Yeah. Which yeah. I understand for the float riding part. However, a child nine and under is not going to eat three courses no. and they're not going to yeah, eat an adult point. size portion. Yeah. I mean, some adults don't eat that, nine, so yeah, child's not yeah. gonna. Uh, yeah. So, so for me, I, I could s- feed a kid fifteen you also, dollars. You could stack a kid on the float, so that's you know two in one space. Look, as someone know, that right? doesn't want kids on the floor, I'm all with this. That's fine. Just don't <laughs> bring them along. Yeah. So if you have kids, might not be the best deal for you. Just saying. Yeah. No, then you've got to be you've got to be that person who's in City Walk at seven o'clock with the virtual app thing on. True. Mm. That's true. Uh, and of course, it wouldn't be Mardi Gras without the food booths serving flavors from New Orleans to Brazil to Belgium and beyond with an expansive menu featuring more than 50 tasting sized items. Make sure to grab your $75 food and beverage card for $65. Or if you're a UOAP, grab your $150 card for only $120. Yes, that's one night's food. That's a <laughs> lot of money's <laughs> worth of food, isn't it? But I, I, I could they're assuming it. people are doing it over the course of the event, not grabbing it for like, right, there's tonight's food sorted. Well, Honestly, and it's like a food and them. beverage card. Yeah. You can use it for uh, true. any food and beverage. Yeah. Just not like at the what, hotels. Like if we go there, it's it's I look at it, you pay the one fifty in between Alexa yeah. and I. Like that's gonna basically take care of the weekend's food in the parks for us. Yeah. 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 Well, last year I bought two of them. So I had three hundred dollars worth of credits mm. one percenter and i got but i saved sixty dollars yeah so and yeah. i and it it took me i just threw my last one away on my last trip so it took me over a year to use it all wow yeah. but it's a it's a good value i mean it's yeah. it's not as good as the original thing they used to do with samples but it's yeah a, it's a close second I'm going to wind somebody up now. We need to start a new offshoot. So we've got the Producers Club. We need the 1% Club. <laughs> and the inaugural members are I Michelle. Know I know you're going. We all know where you're going. And, evidently. And yeah. Brian Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, Brian. Brian. I love you, buddy. Requirements right. are you must own a Tesla. <laughs> so Michelle, get on it. Uh, working on it. Working on it. Let me know how, no, Brian, really let me not. know how hard you want me to hit his arm so it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we have a producers who a producer whose husband works for Tesla, and until that he is true. purchases a Tesla, That's I will not be buying true, a Tesla. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's talk more about the food on offer, and we're not going to go too in depth as we would be here forever. I mean, I'd happily be here forever talking food, but you know. So we'll start off and go through the booths that can be found in the studios. First up's Belgium, which is located on the bridge between London and Springfield. And that serves um, Liège waffles, berries and cream, uh, Liège waffles, s'mores, Brussels frites, and they serve two beers, the Orville Trappist and the Roche, Roch, Rochefort. That's cheese, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, that is. Yeah, the Rochefort Trappist. This can't be so, a cheese beer. Might be. <laughs> I don't cheese and beer. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Mm-hmm. Anybody know what Liège is? Yeah, it's a place in Belgium. Yeah. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> I only know that from the football team, Standard Liège. Um, I need somebody, a listener, to come up with... I can't believe no one's done this so God, far. Spit it out. A, a, a tick-off card of all the items available at Mardi Gras. Because you know damn well there'll be people that'll go and do it. I can't believe no one in the community has come somebody up made with that. a card with all the booths, with all the items, so people can go and tick them off. Because you know locals will be there trying to try everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the passports they do at Food and Wine. Yeah, I was just gonna say they yeah. do those at all the at all the festivals over at Epcot. Yeah, you pick up a little booklet, and yep. I'm surprised Universal doesn't do that. I was that. just gonna like, say that you buy the booklet for ten bucks. If you get stamped at every single place, you win. You know, an insulin shot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's well, that's a hot button topic right now, isn't it? But we've been saying that for yeah. years. I mean, they should do a Food and Wine festival. 
That's basically you what know. Mardi Gras become now. Oh yeah, which very. And we're happy about. with it. Yeah. Yes. Love it. Yes. Yeah. No, so next to that booth is Bloody Marys, which serves two Bloody Marys, a wild one and a mild one. So in other words, one's got spicy sauce and it one hasn't. Oh, one's alcoholic and one's. No, not. I'm telling you, one's got oh, spicy okay. sauce and it yeah. one hasn't. Well, I wouldn't spicy have either. Spice. So. Batten down the hatches. I can't wait for the next one. Come on, Michelle, bring it to us. <laughs> Okay, over in front of Animal Actors, you will you find Brazil, <laughs> which serves picana skewers. Picanha. Picanha. Well, there's no tilde over that in. Whoa. Uh, picanha skewers beef, linguica skewers sausage, chicken coxina. Coxina. And. <laughs> <laughs> That's the coxin, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. It's a shame that wasn't the sausage one. Yeah, it should have been. <laughs> wow. Her I don't know how. Listeners right now must be so yeah. upset. <laughs> Why did you give this to me instead of Chris? It's you just, I love it's it that he gave it to you, to be honest. It's just how it worked out, but it was perfect. I can't remember how much we cut out of that conversation of last year's Mardi Gras, but... <laughs> oh, it's amusing for me the word if nobody is else. by the way, but I prefer Lee's pronunciation of it. <laughs> yeah. Chicken cocks in ya? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Wonderful. Okay. And after the cocks in ya, you get two drinks the mango caprina and Caprina. the guava caprina. Both are cachaca. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I love this segment. Cacha- <laughs> is it cachaca? Cachaça, yeah, it's like a Brazilian rum. Oh, it's all right. I didn't know what it was. I messaged Chris yesterday asking what it was. Uh, you messaged the alcoholic to yes. expect an answer like that? So <laughs> next up in the Words. usual food alley of Mardi Gras, which is a, that street down the side uh, opposite the entrance to the mummy, we have Canada. These are all in alphabetical order, so you'll know we'll be switching back and forwards around the park, so pay attention. Um, Canada has the Canadian snowshoe, which is maple or Nutella. What's a snowshoe? I it's mean, I know a, what a snowshoe is, but I don't know. So I think it's like a for snow. I'm assuming I think it's, it's like a donut-y thing. Yeah, I was gonna say like uh, a bear claw. Poutine with short rib gravy, oh, candied mm. maple bacon, uh, and then they have three drinks: the vodka-based Slocum Maple Smash, the Collective Art IPA, and a non-alcoholic maple lemonade. Ooh. Mm-mm. That sounds interesting. I very specifically wanted to mm. bring attention to the non-alcoholic drinks because we complained quite a bit coming back from Horror Nights last year yeah. that there was nothing for Jade to have or nothing non-alcoholic signature drinks at Horror Nights that yeah. we could find. And I know you can't argue like, oh, she's a kid. She was 18, which is legal to drink over here, but not over there. Yeah, but some people can't drink and choose not That's to drink for various reasons, yeah. medical, so religious, or whatever. There's oh, what? quite so... a few non-alcoholic drinks as part of Mardi Gras this year, which good. I like. good. Yeah. Yes. Over in front of the lagoon at the Long Bar area, we find Central City, which serves crawfish and shrimp boil, crawfish boil, shrimp boil, and oh bishnets. So I was watching. <laughs> do you guys? Do you guys have a, a a TV show? Probably not. The American equivalent of we have a show over here called Come Dine with Me. Hmm. So it's like five people and they all have to host a dinner party and then at the end of it, they, they all, go like at the end of each, each other, they go around each other's house. Yeah, and then every night they vote on the food and stuff and then at the end of the week, whoever gets the most points wins. Oh, that sounds fun. No, it's on Netflix. Yeah. I don't know whether it's on it's, your Netflix. It's car crash viewed at times. Oh, I've, I've watched like 120 episodes yeah, in the last three weeks. And this last was like, I don't know what they are. What is a beige net? Beige net? <laughs> 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 oh, it was funny. <laughs> Of course, I'd spend years. Uh, I will call them that forever now. Um, Drinks-wise, we have the rum-based Category 5 Punch, uh, the Abita mm. Purple Haze Wheat Beer, and the custom Oh Baby Beer. I need Mich- I need uh, oh, baby. Gillian now to be like, Oh Baby. Can't does that sound as good <laughs> as Oh Hell Yeah, does it? No. Yeah, this is the one that was like the weekend bar mm-hmm. of Horror Nights, for those yeah. that don't know. A big long thing. Yeah. That's, well, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> 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 Another booth over by Animal Actors House is Colombia and serves Colombian empanadas and arepas de queso. Uh, the drinks available are refajo beer, the rum and tequila coco loco, and <laughs> the non-alcoholic limonada de coco, which would be coconut lemonade. Yes. Mm, sounds that good. Sounds, sounds interesting, interesting, actually. Yeah, interesting. Ew. Oh, and uh, shaved ice Choladas? Oh, a word that Chris doesn't know. 
Uh-huh. Hmm. Coconut, coconut lemonade sounds really freaking it sounds good to me. Interesting. Ew. I know you I don't love like coconut. coconut. Ew. Don't like that. You put the lime in the coconut. <laughs> anyway. And you mix it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Denmark can be found in front of Fear Factor. Well, what was Fear Factor? And serves what the ro- <laughs> rod pulse? Pronunciation, please. It's pronunciation, no but idea. whatever. Is, is it rod pulse? I have no idea. I'm not Danish. Like it's o How does that sound? letter just sound? I think it's right. an O. I don't it's an know. O I'm not sure. Probably like wrong. strike through it. Yeah, so so. Anybody who's Polish. And let us know. Or I mean, to be fair, Danish. let's upset all the Danish listeners here. Oh, that... Danish. Sorry. <laughs> I was looking at Poles and yeah. Dan- thought Polish. Danish. Sorry. Um, whatever it's called, it's a Danish hot dog. And freaking frikadeller meatballs with Danish gravy. Mm. Yeah. Made with fresh Danes. Frikadeller. No. Frikadeller. Drink options include Odin's Skull, G.I. Dance, Maj. I would say Miod. Miod, yeah. Miod. Can I have some American words next time, Lee? <laughs> no. Viking Blood, Carlsberg, and the Mead Flight, which is the Viking Blood, Odin's Skull, and GI Dance, Majod. Miod, I've literally just told you how to pronounce it. Oh, you Americans. <laughs> no. And you'd have to say Yeah, you Americans. Skull. Oh, you say it. You say it better then. Yeah. Miod. And when you, drink, when you drink, when you drink, you have to say skull. Yeah. So that J will be a Y. Mjod. Mjod. J, not G. Anyway, let's break yes. this bloody. Uh, Chris, you're supposed to be hosting this thing. Get on with it. Uh, yes, I am. I was still researching how to pronounce <laughs> O with a line through it. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds tasty. Yeah. There's plenty of food. There's Not plenty really. of stuff there I would try. Oh, yeah. Like all of it, to be quite honest. There's more. plenty no, more yet. I would try some cake. Tracy. Yes. Tell us who deserves cake right now. <gasps> that would be our birthday, peoples. Yes, we have some producers club birthdays. Nice little nice little group this time. Manageable. Unless Lee's forgotten some. Um, so, we are going to kick off with birthday twins. On February the 7th, it is the gorgeous Sally Brush's birthday. Happy birthday, Sally. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Sally. And also on February the 7th, it's a name I haven't seen for a little while. Yes. <laughs> it's a fan- been hiding. Yeah, the fantastic Jordan Melvin's birthday. Happy birthday, Jordan. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Jordan. Please come play on you. And then a few days later, on February the 10th, it is the marvellous Alex Miranda's birthday. Happy birthday, Alex. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Alex. Happy birthday. Alex, tell your dad, for your birthday, Michelle wants a Tesla. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, tell him. That would be fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, it's a very short list this time. Finally, on February the 11th, it is the Awesome. The one and only Jim Craig's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Jim. Birthday. Happy birthday, Jim. Happy birthday, Jim. He is my favorite. Yeah, thank if you. If you have I not met that. Jim Craig, you are missing out. Yes. Have fantastic birthdays, people. Lots of cake, lots of presents, and lots of love. Yes. And we will continue yeah. on with some more Mardi Gras food. And I've given myself France, which is at uh, Central Park, and they serve the muffaletta cr- crepe. As Brian would tell me, you pronounce it the crepe. So that's a sandwich crepe. That's all it, a muffaletta. No, this muffaletta is the stuff that's in the sandwich. So it's not cheese. I think it's meat. It is meat. Think, it's just uh, every time like, I, get, I forget, and I call it cheese. Deli meats. Yes. Yeah. So the muffaletta crepe, and they have uh, drinks on offer that are. I'm not going to butcher any of these. The Domaine Paul Buis Chinon. Doman. The Doman, whatever. The Dopf and Irion. Custas Blanc, uh, the Bertrand Cote de Rose, Rosé, and a wine flight. Do you need a flight? Well, well, all right then. Up, buddy. You do the next one because I can speak a little bit of German. <clears throat> okay. So can I. So yeah, Germany is up, up next over on the Springfield London Bridge. And that has chicken schnitzel with Kaiser Spatzel and potato pancakes. 
which sounds Impressive. fantastic. Sounds incredibly German, doesn't it? No. Yes. Try saying that. Try asking for that drunk. I can't ask for it sober. <laughs> the it's, dr- it's spelled out the way I would say a drunk. <laughs> yeah. The drinks are uh, Reistorf, Wostana Pilsner, um, Wein Stefana, Wein, Wein Stefana. Wein, w, yeah. And Tusche, Tusche Helle Hefe Weisen. <laughs> Hefe Weisen. Tusche Helle Hefe Weisen. Yes. Oh, I need to test oh, that learning more. German Hang on. again. And Gaffel Kolsch and Eyinger Celebrator and all, and are all beers? They're all beers. They're all beers, people. Yes. Plus. German, German beers are excellent beers. Yes, they are. They all sound like spells in Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like Tuche Helles Hefeweizen. I did enjoy oh. learning German. I might get back mm. into it. Yeah. That was good pronunciation, though. I'm impressed. Yeah. It's just words. Us Americans can't do anything. <laughs> India can be found in San Francisco. Yeah. And that has sounds like a pop- really weird sentence. Well, India can be found <laughs> yeah, in San Francisco. Yeah, I'm pretty sure India's bigger than San Francisco, yeah, but you know. Let's, let's fix that. The Indian food booths <laughs> can be found in San Francisco and has pav bhaji, yeah. which is a vegetable-based stew. Okay. Uh, onion bhaji. I favorite. hope I'm saying that right. Yes, yes, I love an onion bhaji. My favorite. Okay. Onion bhaji and gulab jamun with rose water syrup. Which uh, those are fried dough balls? They uh, are as well as yeah. What gulab jamun? It's like little gulab mi- jamun. They're like little <laughs> mini donuts with a sticky rose flavored syrup. Fantastic. I like how like you could probably describe it like way more complex, and then they're just like fried dough balls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I will buy that. Uh, and uh, they also have two non-alcoholic drinks in the nimbu pani, mm-hmm. which is. Indian lemonade and Ampana, which is a mango drink. Good. Again, two non alcoholic drinks. I hope they'll take this into Horror Nights next this, mm. this year. I'm liking all this lemonade. I love yeah. lemonade. Michelle, tell us tell us what's over in Indonesia. I shall. That's also in San Francisco, apparently. <laughs> um <laughs> the the Indonesian food booth in San Francisco has Indonesian style chili crab with fried mantu. Ooh. Nasi gore- goreng. Yes. You just love watching me Nasi suffer, goreng. don't you? Nasi goreng and bubur. <laughs> 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 that is something. Bubur what? That's a curse from Harry Potter. <laughs> Ketan hitam. <laughs> I have no and idea. And two rum based cocktails in the Bali Punch and the Java Cooler. Interesting. Yeah. I, I believe that's how you open the stone inside of uh, Poseidon's Fury. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sweating after that one. Wow. Um, moving over to New York, where in serving out of Louis G- Gelato window is the Italy booth. Uh, and here you can get the tour of Italy arancini flight. Yes. With tomato, basil, mushroom, and seafood. Arancini's like little I love balls, arancini, yeah. yeah. Um, gelato stuffed pressed brioche which is basically just an ice cream sandwich. I think I've seen them. They're mm. weird. It is literally bread with well, yeah. ice cream in it. It's mental. Yeah, but it's mm. brioche. Brioche is gorgeous. Uh, and they also serve four wines, the Bellini Pinot Grigio, the Bertani Valpolici, whatever the word, Valpolicella, Valpolicella. Tinella, extra dry Prosecco, and Tondo Sueve <laughs> Monti. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> squirm. The difference is squirm. I don't care. I find it funny. <laughs> I mean, generally I'm not, find it a chore. I think it's funny. I'm not even. I do apologise to you. all our Italian <clears throat> listeners. Just all of our if listeners. If we have any. Yeah, we're not doing this on purpose. This is actually us pronouncing them. <sighs> yes. Wow. I'm English. That's the best you're gonna get. No. Oh, and Tracy gets Japan. Yes. If like me, you like Japan, head to Sting Alley for the booth of all of Japan goodness. See, I'm so annoyed that they had all the stuff out for Horror Night there, and then all this stuff. For Mardi Gras, they did nothing in the holidays in there. No, I know. It didn't make any sense. Um, over there, you can find Ube ice cream, sesame bubble waffle cones. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, the Nicky Man uh, bun sampler, which is stuffed buns. I'm assuming they're like little bowel buns. I assume so. Um, but the the dumpling style rather than the folded style. Um, oh, right. Yeah. See, I prefer yeah. them. I like them, yeah. Yeah. Um, Me too. Uh, 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 right. Okonomiyaki which is a savoury cabbage pancake with filling. So it's like the John that I... That's not made. how you pronounced it last time. Okonomiyaki. 
Okonomiyaki, Okonomiyaki. Because Michelle had it and she couldn't for the life of her get through it. Anyway. <laughs> the drinks on offer are the Japanese highball cocktail, which is whiskey. And there's a selection of sakis yes. and Sapporo silver and Kirin Ichiban beers. I do want to try sake. I don't know what it is, but Very I do sweet. want to try it. It's nice. It's quite it's strong. It's alcoholic, isn't yes, it? Yeah. strong. How many highballs are we going to have, Trace? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Yes. Ah. <laughs> uh. All right, then uh, moving over, we got Mexico, which is located to the left of Café La Bamba. Of course. And it has Al Pastor tacos, Baja shrimp ceviche tostadas. Baja shrimp ceviche tostadas. Cool. Uh, Vegan churros and elote, as well as a grapefruit paloma cocktail, which is a tequila-based cocktail. And got to wash it down with a nice Modelo beer and cocktails. See, grapefruit and tequila, I can see being a very good pairing. Yes. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been having one yeah, of those. are really popular down here. Mm. It's crazy the amount of food that's on offer during Mardi Gras at this point. See, I like this better because when we came over in 2020, the, the booths weren't as expansive as these are. But then they did that weird thing where every two weeks they had... Oh, they added yeah, like, like rotation, two or it? three new items and then took the old ones out, which kind of annoyed me because the time we were there... We hit the bad week. They were like, they were all right, but then there was stuff either side of us being yeah. there that I would have much rather had. I think they were just testing the water with things because oh, it really, it's, yeah. it's expanded a lot since oh, then. Yeah. The fact yeah. that now the booths are around I think the, the park, which I think is perfect. You can thank COVID for this. Oh, yeah. Because with not, having, with not being able to do the parade and everything during the first year back they had to look at doing something different and this is where the they, this is where they really tested the booths out and worked and went we'll do it all now well let's face it the yeah. more food booths there are the more money they're going to make so oh, and everybody yeah. everybody likes to eat and they keep them you know not complex but somewhat complex i mean they're not just you know throwing you tacos they're they're yeah. kind of giving you some ceviche and stuff like that uh, just the Mexican one. So it's nice to see them really go in on each country and kind of bring out something uh, unique and interesting to that country. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's hear a bow bow, a pick a bow bow. Um, a now bow, we got this clip bow. in uh, from Kobe and Holly. Bow. Pick a bow bow. Hey, you UOP, this is Kobe and Holly with the Universal Orlando Explorers podcast coming to you for the Bao Chica Bao Bao review. So we had the kimchi fried chicken and Holly, what was the other one? The brisket. So I guess we'll start off with the brisket. What'd you think? I thought it was pretty good. I would give it a three. Uh, It's our first time having bao, so that was really good. But I feel like I couldn't really taste much else in there beside the brisket, although it was pretty tender. Yeah, I really liked the brisket itself and the bao bun was good, but... You know, the the onions were an okay addition. I didn't think it was all that special. I'd probably give it a three out of five. But how did you feel, Holly, about the kimchi fried chicken? I really like the kimchi fried chicken. It was really crispy. It had a great flavor to the sauce on it, too. So I I really enjoyed it. That'd be a five. All right, a five. I'm going to go with a five as well. The sauce was fantastic. The texture of the bao bun is outstanding. And the chicken itself was really good. So all together absolutely outstanding so we're gonna give that one a five out of five that one is an oh hell yeah all right you uop keep doing what you do and we will listen to you soon there's nothing like shamelessly plugging your podcast on someone <laughs> else's not? podcast i tell you what i'd do it if it yeah. was us. <laughs> question is it kimchi fried chicken or is it korean fried chicken it's kimchi fc is what it's called there's no kimchi in it yeah, well, Chris had this when we did them it's Korean the weekend. Fried, it's Korean fried chicken. But the it's not, thing is called kimchi yeah. FC. And FC is fried chicken. Because KFC in Korea is a completely yeah. different thing. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, but Chris said that. Not some specks of 
specks of something in there, but it wasn't kimchi. Is in specks. Crazy, you confirmed in, it was not. There's no kimchi, kimchi. In there. Yeah. Well, Chris, there's I think very little gochujang. I think when you did your review when we were there for the weekend, mm-hmm. that you asked them to take out the cucumber, and there was nothing in it. Yeah. 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 So, it was. Yeah. Basically nothing. Nice. Yeah. Well, if you would like to enter our bow, pick a bow, bow. Uh, rating it's not really a contest you don't win anything but it's fun uh all you have to do is try as many bows as you like rate them one to five one being ugh, five being oh hell yeah and then send them to podcast at uuopodcast.com all right uh let's take a uh, quick commercial break and we'll be right back man we need a vacation oh i got this Whoa, that's awesome! But I was thinking something a little more adventurous. Okay, how about this? Yes! And how about some relaxation from Mama? Oh, perfect. How did you do that? Easy. Port Key Vacations. For your next vacation, let Port Key Vacations take away all the guesswork and stress of planning. From air and hotel to theme park tickets and everything else in between, they've got you covered. Just visit portkeyvacations.com and touch the port key to get started with your free, no obligation quote request. With just one touch, and Port Key Vacations will magically take you wherever you want to go. Welcome back, everybody. Let's hop right in to mardi gras again puerto rico can be found in food alley across from the mummy and has mofongo trio which is bacon shrimp and chicken what's mofongo uh, or you... mofongo nope. Don't know. Don't i like know. it i bet chris would know chris has had to go and answer the door hmm. by the way he'll be back yeah. shortly <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what we said last time uh, Alca... alcapurias i think yeah. that's Beef alpacas and vegan no options. it's not alpacas <laughs> well you shut up alcapurias that's a fun word to say. Yeah. And then, oh, you can also get a classic piña colada cocktail with rum and shaved ice. Hell yeah. What's the thing we shaved? That is ice? all me, 100%. Nah. Spin is or España is up next, which can be found in San Francisco. There's a lot in San Francisco. Uh, they have paella mixto, which is seafood paella. I don't know what the mixto is about. Uh, Spanish seafood. bocadillo, which is ham and goat cheese Ooh. sandwich. Uh, and they also have a leche frita and four types of sangria. Very nice. I would have liked mm. to see a vegetarian paella. Yeah. Can you do a vegetarian paella? Yeah. You can do a chicken paella. I don't like seafood, so I wouldn't have that now, but I'd have all the sangria. So. There are a lot of countries in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. It's that doesn't scream it's, like a really big area to fit all these really good sounding f- probably very popular food booths to be fair though when you think about where all the booths used to be just down that street yeah. by um battery park it was rammed and they were oh, all yeah. down and there it, so and it was hard to yeah and that's why them. there isn't many down there now and san francisco is a much bigger area than that was there's also a lot down um in the little alleyway opposite the mummy as well that's we what i'm a- talking about yeah that's but, where normally that's yeah, where san they Francisco's normally are also that. got quite a yeah, conglomeration. But I think there's not as many yeah. down that street mm. anymore as there used to be. Everything used to be there. And you think when we went in 2020, that whole street and the end of it was where all the booths were. There was nothing anywhere else. I know. This one I am excited about, and I better get there. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago, which is in front of the Back to the Future train, has crab and dumplings, chickpea mm. doubles, flatbread, faluri, which is fried, uh, deep fried. Sp- Spicy dough. Oh, yes. Everybody has their take on a f- fried dough, do Yeah, they? on a donut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But a spicy one, yes. Uh, and there's Caribbean and beer cocktails. Caribbean, that's two words. Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, you said Caribbean. I'm <laughs> uh, excited back, to so I'm going to carry on. Um, that's all the ones in Universal Studios Florida. Now, as we mentioned two weeks ago, Mardi Gras is spilling out into the rest of um, the resort. I think we talked about the stuff in the hotels last time. But there's also booths in Port of Entry and Islands of Adventure. There's two. The first one, Chris is going to tell you all about it right now. Ah, okay. So we got the Mardi Gras Hits booth in Port of Entry. 
And they are serving jambalaya, shrimp gumbo, and the Oh Baby exclusive beer, uh, as well as the Category 5 punch cocktail, which is a rum-based punch. Yeah, so they basically took, like you said, the greatest hits, the things you would expect from Mardi Gras, put them in to Irons. I wonder if it'll ever jambalaya. be all over. What, the entire islands. universe? Like, as many in islands as there is in studios. I, I wouldn't see why not. I don't probably see entice why. people yeah. to go do the event over in in studios. Yeah, um, and there's another booth in part of entry as well. I think these are both at the top, like where it opens out oh, into that the makes lagoon. Sense. I think yeah. there's one on one side and one on yeah. the other at the where the tip board is. Um, and this one is the it's basically the sweets. It's got beer genets and king cake. <laughs> I'm, I'm never not going <laughs> to call them beer genets. Beer genets. I mean, to be fair, until we found out how you pronounce them, we used to call them big nets. To be to be fair, um, and then the or oh, baby exclusive beer and the category five rum punch cocktail as well. Nice. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm-mm. And then also out in City Walk, there are two booths. The first of which is. New Orleans serving shrimp and smoked cheddar cheese rice grits. Interesting. And then there is also yakamin, which is a Cajun beef stew with noodles. Okay. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting too. Cauliflower, dirty rice, and crawfish etouffee, as well as drinks like the O oh Baby exclusive beer, Category Five Punch cocktail, uh, and the Abita Purple Haze wheat beer. Very nice. This is the first time they have a booth in City Walk, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah. And the other booth is a Taste of the Mediterranean, which has crepes suzette, grilled octopus with potatoes, and a selection of wines. So it now means you don't yeah. even need to go into the parks to have a little bit of Mardi Gras. Yeah. No, I like that because it gives people a taste. They might go, no, that was really good. I need to go let's and try. Go and, yeah, let's. The other 1,000 items yeah. that are available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying there's so much food. It's ridiculous an amount of food. It's hard enough coming to the parks with all the restaurants and stuff to choose what to eat anyway and then coming during something like this to try and decide what you want is just it's too much. I mean, this is even awesome for for locals. Like for us, not that we're local, but we go so yeah. often that we have yeah. a lot of the same things over, which is fine, but when these events come around, then we don't even touch any of the other, like, you know, normal spots we would go to and just pretty much eat off a of food booth the entire time. Yeah. Gives you some nice diversity. Well, um, as Seth said, the tribute store is now open in its new location in Hollywood. And there you will be able to grab all your Mardi Gras at merch and snacks. Uh, the new location is themed to represent an international jazz celebration that leads to the traditional alleyways of New Orleans and ultimately into a speakeasy where the Mardi Gras festivities continue. Was that in the Beach uh, Club? Sure. It, it's over at Beach Club, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this peak is not going to be as cool as ours, no. but, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, be sure to check out our social media for pics and video uh, from Madeline, our new park media getter. Yes. That's an official title, by the way. <laughs> it is. Park if you media go on, um, there's a, 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 a video on TikTok of sort of sections of the tribute store. It looks it's okay. It's, it's definitely smaller than the last one. Yeah. I try not to look at too many pictures from it just because I want to experience it. Yeah. But, um, I watched full walkthroughs of it. Yeah. But yeah. It didn't it's... woo me as much as the previous years. But no. we'll see. I'll wait till I get there. They haven't done much to the pass holder lounge. It still very much looks like yeah. the pass holder lounge. It does. Yes. Yeah. That I did see, which is kind of <laughs> weird. It just looks like a highly themed pass holder. Yes. Lounge. But what I've seen, though, it seems quite classic. The style of it this time. I don't know it's just because they haven't done too much to the interiors. But it's quite... It's got quite a chilled vibe, actually. It's weird. But it is a lot smaller. Yeah, it is. Like I said. But Why, though? Why? Yeah. Dang it. What do we know? Why? Because um, Mummy Ops want that space back where it was before. Well, Mummy Ops can do as they're told. Obviously not. Ah, the party continues in yeah. City Walk at Pat O'Brien's Mardi Gras After Party. This will take place from 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. on select nights during the event and includes live DJs, stilt walkers, exclusive food and drink offerings, and more. 
While admission is complimentary, reservations are encouraged and can be made by calling 407-224-3663, or you can do it online from the Universal Orlando website. Probably the app as well, to be honest. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just um, going to be a party. Yes. Um, the Red Coconut Club has become the cursed coconut club and has a, a bio-inspired atmosphere with incredible entertainment and exclusive drinks offerings. And if you enjoyed uh, Graveyard Deadly Unrest from last year's Halloween Horror Nights, you'll enjoy the Cursed Coconut yeah. Club because it looks like most of the set pieces from that scare zone are out in front of it. I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's definitely the most elaborate entrance they've done yeah. since they've started retheming that. I, I've seen a couple of videos from the inside. It looks okay. Yeah. I, I welcome it with open arms. Of course you yes, do. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, and finally, on February 21st, Pat O'Brien's will host its annual Fat Tuesday celebration from 4 p.m. to the wee hours of 1 a.m. Nice. Uh, enjoy live entertainment, including a dueling piano set and exclusive food and drink offerings. Again, while admission is complimentary, uh, reservations are encouraged and can also be made by calling 407-224-3663. Or online, or on the app. Or online, I was going to say, maybe, <laughs> maybe online. No, yeah, you I can get them can. online. That's how I reserved myself. Oh, okay. What, y'all going? Well, not for that. I meant when I went there. Okay, a little bit ago. Mm. I don't know if I'm going that weekend. It'll be fun. It will be. I like the atmosphere in there. Yeah, plus yeah. the pianos are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Mardi Gras is just, it's becoming, it's becoming like the holidays now. It's, it's, it's reaching out beyond, like you said, we've said this about Horror Nights with it being very much confined to Universal Studios Florida and it's a little bit outside. And um, the holidays is like resort wide. Mardi Gras is becoming like that now where it's, it's really leaking out into the hotels and City Walk and, and the islands. It's, it's good. I think it's fantastic. I love it. Mm. I, I love it. When they started that with Horror Nights, yeah, yeah. Do every event. Even in the resorts. Do. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Well, that was uh, some good Mardi Gras talk. I think we'll talk more about it. Well, after you we two have go. been, yeah. 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 After we go, we'll we'll talk about it. Uh, we will do the uh, very hard job of trying food. And, oh, um, that, that's going to be so know. hard. Yeah, I want to try and cover Mardi Gras a little bit more this year. I don't think we covered it at all last year. Yeah, yeah, I remember we even spoke about that. Yeah, um, I think Michelle went down yeah. briefly and did a couple of bits and bobs, but as a rule, like none of us got there last no. year. We'll do better. Right. I accidentally went to the actual Mardi Gras, yeah. and that was the whole <laughs> yeah. reason why yeah. we couldn't make it, <laughs> which was cool. Um, but yeah, we were trying to actually even go opening weekend, just the cards did not line up for us, yep. but uh, we should be there in the next couple of weeks. So, you know, want to grab as much content as we can to, to let you guys know how it is. Yeah, I might see you there. So. <laughs> yeah. we might see you there we might see you there you never know you might <laughs> I mean if you guys are coming I'll be there too but otherwise I'll be there at the end of Mardi yeah. Gras like literally the last week okay I might reach out to some producers and do a producer club round table as well alright well I uh, think that's going to wrap things up for us um, that's the end and uh, we're going to wrap up with another Universal Is and this one comes from Matt Matola. now uh, we'd like you to get involved so just let us know what you think Universal is in three words or less and send them over to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Uh, but for this episode, Matt says Universal is home from home. See you next time. That was another episode of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast, the best and only podcast about Universal Orlando on the island. Check us out on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. For all the podcasts, news, and articles, check out our blog at UUOPodcast.com. Contact us at podcast at UUOPodcast.com. Join the Producers Club by emailing us at UUOPproducers at gmail.com. Listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Check out our friends, the Theme Park Duo, for all your other theme park news, and email Michelle at portkeyvacations.net to book your next trip. So until next time, this is Amity6, call off the Marines, we're coming home. When I wake up, well I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you. When I go out, 
Well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you. When I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who gets drunk next to you. And if I hear hey, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man that's riveting to you. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more Just to be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your 